yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic honour. It, it's such a, a wonderful club, uh, steeped in history and tradition, three world-class links courses, two wonderful clubhouses, um, a large and active membership that, that loves their golf, very knowledgeable and great supporters of the club. So uh, of course it's a, it's a huge privilege to have the opportunity to, 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 to serve the club and, and its constituency. Uh, like all privileges of course it, it comes with responsibilities and uh, it uh, makes me very aware of the uh, the onus on me to uh, make sure that the club uh, prospers and uh, goes forward and delivers for all its members the kind of experience that they they want and deserve but uh, yeah nobody could be unaware of what a, a, a huge honor it is to to serve in that capacity it's not not what I envisaged when I took on the role. I don't think anyone could have foreseen this, uh, and it has been a challenge uh, at some moments in particular. But uh, it's a challenge that I've enjoyed trying to, to rise to, uh, and uh, given the difficulties that we've been presented with, I think the club has worked collectively very hard to, to, to meet those ch challenges and to try and do the very best to protect and preserve the institution, to, to take it forward insofar as we've been able to under the the present circumstances so it's been uh, exhilarating in some ways worrying in others but um, a, a challenge that uh, more or less I've enjoyed uh, trying to rise to. Well, it's been a great pleasure and a privilege to work with the staff we've got a, a very dedicated professional and hard-working team at, at the club both in terms of the salaried staff and in terms of the committee uh, all of whom are dedicated expert people who give freely of that expertise and working with all of them to try and ensure the greater good of the club has been uh, very stimulating actually and very very rewarding. Um, we've all had uh, challenges to face but the way in which we've come together I think and, and tried to, to face down those challenges has been uh, well it's been a, a privilege to be in, involved with that. Well, there have been some good memories from, from 2020, uh, I, I think particularly the club championship, which we were able to, to hold in fantastic weather, very good turnout, uh, a great contest between two fine golfers and, and a worthy w winner again in, in Tom Simmons, who captured the title for the, for the third time. That, that was a, a great experience. Uh, not long after that, we managed to play the Derby Cup. That's one of the highlights of my year in any circumstances, that, that uh, long-standing battle between Gullen Golf Club and Dilton Castle Golf Club that goes back to 1927. And it's always a great experience on and off the course. Um, Gullen Golf Club lost this year, well and truly thrashed, uh, uh, which uh, is a shame, but actually uh, I, I don't mind. It was, just, it was just great to see everyone participating, 150 odd golfers out, out having a, a good time. And it reminded me of, uh, what we've had in the past and what we'll have again in the future. So that really was a, a highlight. Uh, in, in other ways, the, the opening of the new facilities on the other side of the road, uh, around number two and three course, the wonderful new short game area, the improvements that we made to the 18th hole on number three course, the new practice ground extended and uh, made much more um, satisfactory with, with new balls and a new putting green. So our, our off course facilities have really uh, been transformed in fact and uh, it's great to see the realisation of that important plank in our five year plan that, that so many of my predecessors had worked so hard to, to, to set in place. I think the, the, the debates that we had over whether or not to proceed with the visitors clubhouse redevelopment were also very satisfying uh, in some ways of course it was a, a controversial and a difficult issue for the club but actually I think the way in which the committee shared a great deal of information with the membership we had a, a very engaged and active dialogue as to the best way uh, to proceed or, or not um, some strong views on all sides as there rightly should be but I think we, um, we came out of that process stronger with a, a, a steadied uh, will of, of the club as to how we should best proceed. It was a very good and healthy exercise in democratic participation and uh, problematic as it, as it was at the time and, and, and controversial in some ways. I think actually it was a worthwhile and, a, and, a, and an invigorating experience from which the club as a whole benefited. And I think we're all stronger and uh, steadied in our in our resolve by that and I think uh, the majority of the members have come behind the decision whether they approved of it or not 
and we're, we're, we've gone forward together as a membership and I, I'm sure we in the end made the right decision for the club and we'll all reap the benefits of that when the newly redeveloped Visitors Clubhouse comes on stream as the Gull and Links Clubhouse in, uh, in June of, of, of this year 2021. Well, of course, not, not as much uh, as I would have liked, uh, both uh, as a consequence of the burdens that the captaincy imposes and, of course, the result of the particular circumstances of this year. But I really can't complain. So, so many of our members who live beyond the county boundary of East Lothian haven't been able to access the courses at all. And I feel very badly on, on their behalf. The club feels uh, deeply regretful of, of that situation. So whatever complaints I might have living locally about not being able to play golf are as nothing compared to so many of our of our members. So I've, I've tried to keep it ticking over, but uh, as the handicap goes up and up, it gives me a great excuse for uh, poor performance, doesn't it? So. Well, I think my first hope is for the ending of restrictions as, as quickly as possible so that we can get all our members back on the courses and try and get back to some semblance of normality as quick, quickly as possible. Um, one of my great ambitions is to be able to leave my successor with a more or less normal golfing life on and off, off the courses. So that, that really would be my num number one ambition and I'm hoping that by the second half of 2021 we'll begin to see the return of our playing calendar of our competitions, of our visitors, our members, guests, and uh, the, the life within the clubhouse of, of dinners and social events. So that's really my, my hope and my, my great uh, light at the end of the tunnel in, in 2021. I suppose more specifically, the opening of the Gull and Links clubhouse is uh, something I'm greatly looking forward to. It's gonna be a superb new addition to the club's offerings. It, it, wonderful already inside to see what's beginning to be done different areas for different activities, a fantastic additional pro shop, wonderful bar, great new menu, all sorts of very exciting things which will really make that facility a great addition for the members as well as of course for the visitors that we hope will be returning before too long. So so that's my great um, ambition for 2021 and the, the single thing that I'm looking forward to most. Well, I think one of the things that our marketing data tells us, and it won't be a surprise, is that many golfers are likely to be golfing domestically as opposed to overseas in, in the coming year and perhaps for some little time to come with quarantine arrangements and other restrictions on, on travel. So I think one of our big business priorities is to target the domestic market in, in altogether new ways, try and encourage golfers to, to come to Scotland, come to Gullen in, in, in particular and, and take advantage of all that we that we have here. Uh, of course, we're already uh, a club that's very well known across the UK and, and across the world and a club that, that welcomes visitors, but I think we want to emphasise that all the more. Part of the redevelopment of, of the Gullen Links Clubhouse is to provide top class facilities for visitors as, as well as for members. And we're going to be offering all sorts of deals and incentives and packages which involve number two and three course as well as number one such that um, those domestic golfers we hope will, will come here and in, in, enjoy what we have so i think that that's one of our big business priorities as part of a, a, a suite of strategies that seek to repair some of the economic damage of the last 15 months and to to, to take the club on in, in in positive ways which will map our trajectory on the business front in, in the future. Well, uh, bear with us if you can, be patient. Of course, none of us have much uh, choice in, in that matter. I think particularly our members from beyond the county boundary, uh, at least 50% of, of our number who haven't been able to, to, to play the courses um, and, and, and really have had poor value for money from their subscriptions in the last 12 months. We, we really do feel for them. We want them to be back here as soon as possible. We've offered a few small thank yous to, to, to reward the forbearance that they've all shown, but they have indeed shown that forbearance. Um, that They've quietly and patiently endured the privations that they've had to, to, to suffer and uh, well, we just can't wait to, uh, to repay them for that by giving them as good a possible golfing experience as, as we can when, when they return and the sooner the better. Well, first of all, to say, yes, we have missed those visitors. It's one of the great 
features of, of this club that it, it's at the centre of international golf. We're, we're fortunate that, that people from the United States, from Scandinavia, from, from all over the world flock, flock here. They flock to Scotland to play links courses and unfortunately Gullen is, is, is very much part of their plans um, and we do miss them. They add a great deal to the atmosphere here. It, it's wonderful. Um, it, American and Scandinavian and other visitors are so enthusiastic, so knowledgeable, um, such great enthusiasts for, for Lynx golf. Um, I think often we able to offer in Scotland the kind of golf that they won't experience elsewhere ar around the world and, and they love to come here, we love to have them. So it, it has, um, it's been a great loss um, that they haven't been here in the last 12 months and we can't wait to have them back. Uh, one of the um, things that I'm pleased that we've been able to do in, in recent years is to in, increase the number of our overseas members, which is, is a signal of, uh, as to how much we value their, their input, but, but visitors in general and, and members, guests from overseas add to a, a, the rich mix that uh, we find on our fairways and in our clubhouses and, and that's something we're, we're very keen to get back and, and to push forward in, on in the future to develop, to develop further. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've really enjoyed this last year and if one can enjoy a year of the sort that we've just had, then surely uh, normal years will be so much better. And it's a very rewarding thing to do, particularly if one believes in the institution, believes in the club, as I believe in this one. It's a great uh, privilege and a, and a pleasure to, to serve it. And actually, I've, I've, I've learned a, a, a huge amount by, by being captain be able to observe the, the workings of the business from, from the inside, to work with some tremendous people within the club, tremendous committee members, to, to meet so many of the members. Um, inevitably one tends to play golf in one's own little groups, but to be given the opportunity to, to, to meet a much wider constituency has been fascinating and, and extremely rewarding and something that will be of enormous benefit to me in my golfing and social life in the future. So absolutely I would uh, recommend a, 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 a post such as this. Of course it's a, a lot of work but um, you don't get out for now. Um, if you, if you want to uh, reap the, the, the benefits and the, the, the pleasures of being in a, in, in a job like this, then of course you have to uh, put, put your shoulder to the wheel. Um, but it's a, a wheel well worth putting the shoulder to in my experience.